In Consumer Corner, we take a look at trends and products creating a buzz here in China. On today's show, we're talking about new prohibitions on alcohol in China's military. Recently, Jin Jiu Ling, or alcohol prohibition, has become a hot topic of conversation in China. The Chinese New Year holiday is the traditional peak season for high-end liquor consumption at banquets, but the Baijiu and Booze Fest for officials might appear a little watered down this year. That's because China has made several moves aimed at reducing expenditures by officials, among these being limitations on alcohol served at functions. Last December, China's Central Military Commission issued 10 regulations designed to limit the pomp and circumstance when its officials make the rounds. The regulations specifically forbade high-ranking officials from being given alcohol, luxury banquets, welcome banners, red carpets, floral arrangements, soldier formations, performances, and souvenirs. Perhaps most bruising of these regulations is the alcohol prohibition. China's national liquor of Baijiu has long been the drink of choice at military banquets, and the new policy could do serious damage to Mao Tai and the few other high-end Baijiu brands. Consultants cited by Xinhua News estimated that though these high-end brands make up just 20% of the total Baijiu market, they will bear the brunt of the new regulations that could spell further trouble for their bottom lines. But following the announcement, things went from bad to worse for the high-end Baijiu makers. In a survey on Sohu.com, 38% of respondents said that alcohol restrictions will only be meaningful when extended to local governments. And at least one province has heeded that call so far. In an attempt to root out wasteful spending, Hainan province recently issued a blanket ban on luxury banquets and receptions featuring liquor. Hainan is the tropical island located off China's southern coast, and it's a hotspot for luxury tourism during the Chinese New Year. Industry insiders are now speculating that Hainan's move could generate pressure on other provincial and local governments to make similar bans. Those fears led to stocks for industry leaders Guizhou Maotai and Wu Liangye to tumble on the day after Hainan's announcement. This could be especially damaging for Maotai because of its reliance on sales through official channels. Maotai releases very little of its premium liquor onto retail markets, choosing instead to operate mostly through direct sales to businesses and government organizations. The Beijing News quoted a Baijiu industry insider saying that Maotai puts 70 to 80 percent of its production toward direct sales to these groups, with only 20 to 30 percent reaching ordinary consumer markets. China Business News cited December data showing that Maotai has seen a 40 percent decline in its sales volume. Industry insiders predict that the dismal sales will continue worsening through the first quarter of this year. The freeze-up in high-end Baijiu sales and the resulting inventory buildup have come to exacerbate tensions between dealers and manufacturers of Baijiu. Maotai attempted to halt a price slide by setting an unbreakable floor under the price of Maotai sold by dealers. To date, it's reportedly fined and cut off sales to several dealers that undercut its price mandate. With the restrictions on official purchases threatening their main cash cow, Maotai and Wu Liangye have tried to work their way into the mid-range market by launching Baijiu products priced between 700 and 800 yuan, around $120. That's approximately half the price of their premium Baijiu offerings. Maotai's senior management maintains that the brand can wean itself off of government-driven demand and continue to thrive from a broader base of consumers. But analysts predict that the normally celebratory New Year will be a darker one for Maotai as it struggles to cope with the alcohol prohibitions in the Chinese military and in Hainan. Chinese netizens have taken to the web to express a whole range of opinions on the content and effectiveness of alcohol prohibitions. One poster named Xuan Bao Ba wrote, even if the officials stop drinking high-end baijiu, they can still go out and order pricey dishes at the banquets. What is the point of imposing such restrictions? Why not set a maximum standard of five bucks per meal for these public servants? As long as they do not plunge their hand into taxpayers' pockets, they can drink whatever they want. Another netizen discussed the impact on the country's baijiu industry. They wrote, what is Malta's actual output? How much is the actual market demand for this kind of luxury baijiu? Whoever thinks over these two questions will realize that the price for Mao Tai won't fall sharply because of the so-called alcohol prohibition. Even if the prices drop by half, ordinary people still cannot afford Mao Tai. House purchase restrictions made home prices soar. Now when it comes to restrictions on baijiu consumption, who can be sure what happened in the real estate markets won't happen again? Or who can guarantee that the baijiu market won't go down the same old disastrous road? Another poster brought up questions about whether the restrictions would end up cutting down on the kind of wasteful spending and crony capitalism bred at the banquets. Kelly Taoxian wrote, Some say the alcohol prohibitions are meant to cut down on spending on baijiu by the regional government. But are we sure it's the regional government that's actually paying the bill for luxury baijiu? The government not buying baijiu and the government not drinking baijiu are two totally different things. 
That post seems to suggest that the negative impact of the purchases is not just in the public money spent on the liquor, but in the corners cut and the deals made because of gifts of the liquor. Still, some posters describe the move as a first step in the right direction. One Weibo user wrote, It's easy to declare plans for alcohol prohibition, but what is really difficult is making sure the policy is well executed. Either way, it's still a step forward for capping official expenditures and curbing the demand that pushes the markups of Baijiu products. In that case, Maotai and other high-end Baijiu brands can't just resort to hollow slogans like exclusive, revered, or honorable. Instead, they'll have to go from being luxury products to winning over ordinary consumers and becoming a true national liquor. In many ways, attempts to revamp Maotai's business model mirror the project of rebalancing the Chinese economy as a whole. In both situations, one needs to be slowly weaned off of government-driven growth while cultivating demand and consumption by ordinary Chinese consumers. It's a tough project for the economy as a whole, and it may be just as tough for the struggling brand of Maotai.